Hey friends, a quick one today because I wanted to make sure that you didn't miss this potentially awesome tidbit of news. Machine learning has been a big term on social media and among several tech industries, including my specialty of audio production. Much of the public discussion around so-called intelligent learning AI algorithms has centered around their negative impact, such as artificially tailoring our reach on social media platforms or finding dystopian new ways to profile us and extract or cross-pollinate our data across the kind of agencies one commonly does not want data extracted and cross-pollinated among. However, it's not all bad. Other than slowly creating Skynet, machine learning has tremendous applications and tasks where regular coding would be seen as inhospitably complex. Tasks such as reproducing the non-linear behavior of electronic transformers or artificially processing images with immense flexibility. The applications are myriad and the potential very exciting. One thing we've been asking about for some years now is, why haven't we seen the effects of machine learning in racing simulators yet? Well, it would appear that Sony and Polyphony Digital have heard our prayers and have silently been developing what they call Sophie. Sophie is an AI system created entirely around the principle of machine learning. Sony referred to it as an AI agent which learned to drive at a highly competitive level all by itself. How competitive, you ask? Well, let's explore. As all AI learning projects, there tends to be a large teething period at the beginning. The hardest thing to get right among coders who specialize in neural networks is which parameters do we need it to learn about? The quality of outcome is really determined by asking the right questions, then creating the correct incentive structures. When it comes to programming racing game AI, you're looking at something tremendously complex with a multitude of dynamic variables at play and a reaction time of mere milliseconds required. That's a lot of potential calculations and certainly explains why the AI we've seen in most racing games thus far has been nothing to write home about. Their behavior is always decidedly inhuman. Enter Sophie. While the system initially had a lot of problems, some as basic as Sophie being unable to run in a straight line, it eventually learned and grew, as all new minds do. Sophie began as a tabula rasa, a blank slate, and over time, via reinforcement learning, became so competitive that she could not only go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the fastest Gran Turismo players in the world, but actually beat them. Sophie is currently at a point where she can beat the fastest hot laps in the world by anywhere from a half second to a second and a half, based on emergent driving techniques that a human simply isn't capable of or would not have thought to try. And while it might seem straightforward enough to code an AI to dominate hot lap contests, as you might imagine, it's far harder to code one which can race fairly and competitively. This became the challenge with Sophie with the designers needing to finesse the right rewards and penalties to provide the algorithm for driving that was considered correct or overly aggressive or timid. Like standard machine learning, you set up a list of parameters, then run millions of simulations, observe the outcomes, tweak and repeat. As you can imagine, this level of trial and error is far more than a human could ever possibly do in their lifetimes and eventually will have to result in times which are simply unattainable by human players. I suppose the question that this naturally begs is, how often will Sophie be exploiting the physics flaws or shortfalls in the engine in order to achieve those times? While this sort of behavior is part and parcel of all professional esports, to those of us who simply want to train for driving the real world, will this be a blessing, a curse, or a bit of both? I suppose only time will tell. Perhaps in a perfect world, Sophie will signal glaring physics bugs to developers long before gamers ever get their hands on, and in a sense, aid in the future development of realistic racing titles. That's one sim racer's utopian pipe dream anyway. So while we're inching our way ever closer to the robot apocalypse, it's heartening to know that at least for a few years, we'll get some really sick offline racing. How awesome is that? Make sure to subscribe for more Gran Turismo 7 content. My PS5 has just arrived, along with all the necessary capture hardware, so you can bet I'll be diving into this new title at full force and sharing the experience with you guys. Until then, I'll see you all later.